So if you're a fan of shows like Justified, Ozark, Sons of Anarchy, Yellowstone, any of those shows, I got a banger for you. So right off the bat, this is going to be a spoiler free review. And forgive me if I ramble, because this is going to be pretty off the cuff. I mean, I love this show. I want to talk about it. I want to get you guys into it. If you guys have already seen this show, comment down below. Let me know what you think of it. And if you do go on to watch the show after I explain it a little bit, please come back and let me know what you thought of it. I really want as many people as possible to see this show because I absolutely love this show. So if you're unfamiliar, the show I'm going to be talking about is obviously Banshee. And if you're unfamiliar with the show, basically it's a show about this con who got out of jail after a 15-year stint and he moves to this small Amish town called Banshee, Pennsylvania. And the reason he was in jail is because he did this diamond theft with this woman named Anna, who was like his love interest at the time. And he kind of screwed over his former boss, who was a Ukrainian mob boss named the rabbit. And he needs to both meet up with her and kind of figure out what happened to the diamonds they stole. And also lay low because rabbit's obviously pissed off and he's going to start gunning for him. And you have this weird little triangle situation going on where rabbit is actually Anna's dad. So his love interest is also trying to kill him. So he has to lay low in this town. And when he does get to this town of Banshee and he's looking for Anna, he stops at this bar. And while he's at the bar, he meets the bartender. They obviously talk back and forth, yada, yada, yada. And this guy comes in and he kind of makes it known to him that he's the new sheriff named Lucas Hood. While he's sitting and having a drink with the sheriff, he kind of, you know, they start to talk about the town. He gets to know it a little bit. He asks him, like, why he's in the area, you know, just small town talk. The sheriff also discloses to him that he's being sworn in. He's like an outsider because the town is so corrupt. While they're kind of just conversing, these two dudes come in and kind of start fucking with the sheriff. Like, they're having a little bit of a confrontation. Things go south, the sheriff gets shot. And our main character in the aftermath kind of witnessing all of this, you know, he's a criminal. He kind of notices that everybody died and that nobody knows who the actual sheriff is because he was just talking to the sheriff. So he's like, you know, I got to hide from this guy. I got to lay low. I'm going to become the sheriff. So he takes the identity of the sheriff, becomes Sheriff Lucas Hood, and now you have a criminal running the small town of Banshee. And obviously, as I said, this takes place in a bar. So the bartender named Sugar, who's actually also an ex-con and a retired boxer, he kind of gets in it with Lucas Hood too, because he's like, you know, if you're going to be a criminal in this town, I know your identity. I want a piece of it. You have this dynamic going on between Sugar, Lucas Hood, you know, his love interest, Anna, who's still out in the town somewhere. And he also knows this guy named Job, who's like this cross-dressing hacker. And between them, they just create this criminal enterprise in the town of Banshee, in which the entire law enforcement is basically criminals. And the thing that kind of makes the show interesting is because you have a bunch of criminals running this small town, the show doesn't really have to adhere to the normal tropes of police authority and town politics because all the law enforcement basically doesn't care because they're criminals. So there's going to be a bunch of plot lines that obviously form from the fact that he's not the actual sheriff, starting most of which Rabbit is still looking for him, the guy he owes money to and the mob boss. And he's going to try to track him down, even though he's going to hide as the sheriff in this town for a while. And the town's going to become more and more suspicious of him because obviously he's an ex-con and the way he's going to act is not going to be like a law enforcement official. So the town's going to become more and more like, weary of the fact that he doesn't adhere to any of the normal police activity. And also because he's a criminal, he's still going to be committing criminal acts. He's going to be committing heists. He's going to be trying to steal from banks. He's going to be trying to steal from military bases. The group of friends just doesn't care. They don't stop. So you have all of these dynamics going on about him being the sheriff, him actually solving crime him committing crimes, people coming after him. And you also have the normal town players, which as I said, it's an Amish town. So you have this guy, he's like the big kingpin of the town named Kai Proctor. And he's like the head of the Amish community. He left being an Amish kid and he kind of just resorted to crime. And before Lucas Hood gets there, he's basically the guy who runs everything in the town. He's the most feared guy. But him and his niece, they kind of have a power dynamic that the new people are going to be dealing with. And you also have the Indian reservation in the town, the Kanaho tribe, that they're kind of pissed off because they feel like they're entitled to their land. So they have beef with the Amish. You have the Thieves Guild running around doing whatever they want in this town. And as a subsection of the actual Indian reservation, you have this like extremist group called the Red Bones, who are like the most extreme version of all the Indians, where they just don't like anybody and they believe that their land was stolen. So they're just going to kill and steal from and just mess with anybody they don't care about. And then on top of that, you also have like this neo-Nazi fascist party that's kind of in the town. And they're all competing for the drug industry. They're all competing for like the strip club industry, bar industry. They're all just playing for power in this small town. So if you're one of these people who love these shows where you have a bunch of different moving parts and you, everyone's competing for power, you're probably going to love this show. 
Now, immediately what sets this show apart from normal shows of its genre is it is incredibly violent. And I don't mean like there's a lot of action, things like that. It's like hard R graphics where it's like you got bone snap and you got consistent fights. You have some extremely gnarly practical effects, some super cool fight scenes and kill scenes. It's just so over the top and unrelenting in its like portrayal of violence. I honestly loved it. It was a breath of fresh air compared to a lot of these shows that are really toned down for television. And to me, it was just super fresh. As opposed to a lot of other shows too, this show really doesn't waste a lot of time. It's only four seasons long, about eight to 10 episodes a season. And it's one of those shows where every time there's like a new plot point, the characters don't have plot armor. They just kind of progress the story. It comes and goes and it ends, which I'm a big fan of because there's this new trend in modern television where they just consistently keep a show running on and on and on is like fan favoritism. And I like when a show can just conclude with a satisfying conclusion. I think this show does that. And something that's kind of interesting about this show is it's only four seasons long and it was a Cinemax show originally. It was supposed to be on HBO or something, but it didn't end up being. So you really do get like, a little bit of a Skinamax vibe to it, where at least the first season, like there's sex scenes like left and right. Probably like three to four an episode to the point where at the beginning, I thought it was like really low bar. But as it progresses season to season, it starts off as this like low budgety Cinemax type of show. But by the end of it, it's like the cinematography is great. It's got a full fledged plot. Like as it progresses, you just see the storytelling getting better. You see the acting getting better. Like this show from start to finish doesn't even feel like the same show. It becomes so well produced. And because of that, as I said, the characters are very memorable. They're very short and brief, the stint you get to know them aside from the main characters. And it just makes the whole experience just feel like a nice little wrapped gift that you don't really experience anymore with shows that consistently run on too long. They kind of don't know their identity. This show 100% knows exactly what it wants to be and it's completely unforgiving in it. And anytime a show leans into its identity, that's a big plus for me. So as I said, even from the first episode of the show, there's a ton of action. And initially, I kind of thought the CGI was terrible, which is easily the worst thing about the show. There's like a handful of scenes where the CGI is not good. You can tell the budget's low. But um, as for the Skinamax thing, you just have like hot women everywhere in the show. And the thing that's kind of unique about this show is even though they are all attractive, obviously, they're all badass and they can all fight. Like every single woman in this show who's kind of like a main character just throws hands with anybody. There's like these super intense fighting scenes super bloody, super over the top. I just thought it was pretty badass and refreshing that you have women who kind of held their own in a TV show. So as we went over, I mean, the show has guns, tits, gangsters, violence. Like what more could you ask for in a show, honestly? So something that's pretty interesting about this show, in my opinion, is that the main actor specifically, but a lot of the cast as well, I feel like they kind of got known and this was like their coming of age, you know, like as an actor and an actress where they were really good in this show. And then looking back, though, I can see why they got popular and why they got a bunch of roles after this, because there's a lot of people in this show that would go on to do a lot of bigger projects after this. I mean, some of them being like the main character, Lucas Hood, he's played by Anthony Starr. You'll probably know him better if you've seen The Boys as Homelander. He's great in this show. You know, he's like badass. He reminds me a lot of the lead character of Justified. He just doesn't give a shit. I feel like the guy's face is permanently bloody because he gets in a fist fight every episode. But he's great in the show. His love interest, Anne, I believe she was in Casino Royale to some extent, but she's really good in the show. So the third member in their cast is Job. He's like this Asian cross-dresser and he's pretty funny, but he's played by Hoon Lee and he was in Premium Rush. He's in that show Warrior that was on HBO, I believe is an exclusive. So, you know, he was in something bigger after this. You have Kai Proctor, who's like the Amish kingpin of the town that everybody fears. He is absolutely perfect in this show. I don't think anybody else could play that role. You have Rebecca Bowman, played by Lily Simmons, who ends up being like Kai Proctor's niece in this show, and they go into business together. She would go on to be in like True Detective, Bone Tomahawk, some other movies you're probably familiar with. This show's also got Tom Pelfrey, who I'm a huge fan of. He goes on to play Kurt Bunker in this, who's like this reformed neo-Nazi. He's got this dilemma with the Aryan Brotherhood he's trying to get out of. They won't let him leave. And a lot of people will know him from Ozark and Iron Fist and I love this dude as an actor. I think he's such a good actor. And apparently that guy just has like an ability to cry on demand. But obviously there's other actors and there's other people who are going to become important, people who come and go. But those are some of the main ones and some that I thought were interesting and, you know, who they are and like what they would go on to be in shows. And I think that really helped propel this show at the time. I could go into it a little bit more about the plot, the intricacies of season to season, but I actually want to keep it vague because I really want as many people as possible to hear about this show and experience it the way I did. This show is definitely one of my hidden gems. I feel like maybe is talked about sometimes, but like nobody really respects or puts in the category of some of the other good shows. And, you know, as much as I like it to kind of stay my little baby, 
I feel like I'm like obligated to tell people about it, you know, get as many people onto it as they can, because I love this show. I feel like a lot more people would like this show and they're kind of just not aware of it. Maybe they write it off because it was a Cinemax show or something. But either way, I highly recommend on my behalf. So I hope after this and just after a little bit of a brief overview, obviously not trying to spoil anything, trying to let you guys enjoy it for yourself. I do persuade some of you guys to go check this out. I really liked it. I think a lot of people, if you like those shows I mentioned at the beginning, something in that genre, you'll really like it too. I hope you give it a try. It is on HBO Max right now. It, it was supposed to be on HBO Max when it came out, but I guess like Cinemax won the rights to it or something. I don't know how the whole thing played out, but either way, I'm really glad it got made. I'm glad it somehow made it to four seasons on Cinemax, honestly, because, you know, being a lower budget show on that, I could have easily seen this getting canceled, but I understand why it got to season four, because obviously the fans liked it and I liked it too. But yeah, I hope this has motivated you to go check the show out. You know, I think it needs more love. I think the acting's all good. The plot's good. The violence is fun. It's a really fun time. It's a really bingeable show. If you have seen this show, as I said already earlier, comment down below. Let me know. You know, I'm trying to get some opinions on this. I'm trying to just get get the hype up for this show. You know, maybe they can do like a prequel, a sequel, something. You know, let's get some more Banshee universe. If you didn't see this, comment down below. Let me know if you think it's interesting or not. And, you know, maybe comment down below something you feel like is a hidden gem of a show. You know, maybe something only you watch or you know, something you feel like just doesn't get the love it deserves. Maybe I'll check it out. But, yeah, that's all I got for this video, guys. You know, just wanted to kind of shed some light on a hidden gem. Hope you guys enjoy it. I am going to put a link to my normal reviews up here. You want to watch some 2024 movie reviews or some stuff I normally do. Either way, guys, as always, take care. Stay safe.